Hello, hello, hello. How are you? I am watching the uh, comments fly by from the uh, YouTube friends and um, they're deep in conversation about naming their looms. By the way, Gemma, congratulations on naming your loom. Let me see if I can do it, not butchering it. I like that you uh, um, gave me a phonetic, a phonetic pronunciation. Was it um, Alstea? Is that what it is? You let me know if that was really way off base, but it's a beautiful name. Hello, hello, welcome. Just in case you haven't met yet, my name is Chris Acton with Acting Creative, and this is Live at the Loom. Woohoo! It's, uh, we get together every Thursday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we talk about life and weaving and all the good things that are happening. And, you know, on occasion, other not so great things, but mostly good things that are happening in the world right now. So shout out to my early birds here this morning. I know I've seen Jennifer and Shannon and Gemma and Cynthia and Anne. And who's in Cyprus where it's early evening? And what time is it? How many hours ahead are you? Uh, I'm always curious about that stuff. Uh, hello to Connie. Hello to Lori. Uh, let's see. Carrie is here. Hello, my sweet friend. Uh, let's see. Who else is here? Um, oh, see, look at all the all of the comments. You guys are just so fun. Um, let's see. Who else? Who else? um we're scrolling we're scrolling ernie is here hello ernie are you home finally ernie devries let us know where you are we always like to keep track of ernie which is awesome let us know let us know ernie i see you just driving around seeing the world tamison's here uh-huh who else laura miser is here hello how are things in good old cincy uh hello sherry and sue ann <laughs> And Jody Abara is on. Hello, Jody. If you guys don't know Jody, she's the owner of Cotton Clouds. We love her. Uh, give her some love. Let's see. Ellen is here. Hello, Ellen. And Linka's on. Hi, Linka. She said, I've got you on my Bluetooth in the car on my way to work. Boo. I have to go into the office today, but at least it's because we're having our Thanksgiving lunch. Oh, that's a good reason. That's a good reason, Linka. We'll, we'll let that pass. <laughs> if you ever need a note, you just let me know. And I will, uh, I'll send you a note that says... Your friend Chris from Live at the Loom said you have other things to do. <laughs> Hello, Kathy. Uh, okay, Anne says, here we go. It is, uh, so 5.30, so that's three, this is eight hours ahead. Whew. Anne, I love your commitment. Thank you so much. Uh, hello, Jojo. Welcome. Is this your first time, Jojo? I don't recognize that name. Hello, and Donna Hobson is on, and Sam is here from warm and sunny Southwest Ontario. Okay, so Sam and I had a discussion recently and uh, Sam is in, as she said, Southwest Ontario. So uh, she's like, well, you realize that technically I'm farther south than you are in Northwest Indiana. I was like, that seems crazy. My geography skills are not great, I have to admit, but I'm fascinated by that. Uh, let's see, who else? Karen Crocker is on from Wisconsin, hello. Ernie, uh, oh, here we go. Ernie says he is in home in Flagstaff. No more big trips until January, which is right around the corner, Ernie. We'll, uh, we'll, look, forward to, uh, we'll look forward to that. By the way, I just have to give um, a shout out to uh, Ernie, who I got to meet like two weeks ago. And then this week, just yesterday, I got to meet um, uh, Bonnie Crook. Okay, it is so much fun. By the way, if you guys ever come through Northwest Indiana on your way to or from Chicago on um, uh, 80, 94. I live right on those roads right there. If you ever come past, please let me know because I will meet you for coffee. Well, you know, tea. <laughs> I will meet you. And um, it's, it's always such a delight when I get to uh, meet some of you beautiful people. Like when Carrie came over from Spain, huge thrill, huge, huge thrill. Uh, oh, thank you. Look at this. Thank you, Sue Ann. It's, uh, you know what? I, I've done a pretty good job keeping them, uh, keeping them looking uh, pretty nice and neat. I don't know um, uh, if you were around when Sue Ann when I was talking about that, but I uh, cleaned them up because I had a, a video crew come in to do, they uh, recorded me for um, an episode on the local uh, PBS station. It's not going to air till months from now. However, I was like, this is the, this is the push that I need to get my uh, to get my stuff together, so it was a number of weeks, and uh, and then I got it all. It's uh, it's looking good. 
um, at some point I'll show you, I have shelves like right over here too. There's a little window over here and there's some shelves right over here. And basically I cleaned out those shelves completely. So I had room for all the other yard. It's, it's a little bit out of control. Anyone else, anyone else have an out of control yarn stash? Give me a hands up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh-huh. Um, oh, Jojo said she is in Cleveland, just north, north of Chattanooga. Chattanooga is a great area. I have cousins that live there. Jojo, not that far uh let's see yes oh hi nancy from colorado how are you uh see yep uh-huh uh let's see Sherilyn is here yeah we were talking about uh weather and um i have to say that uh we have had we have had perfect weather here but this week has been it has been 60 degrees here for a couple of days now. And that is so rare for November in this part of the world. So we've all been taking advantage of that. We're all giddy. We're all like, I have to be outside. It's uh, it's really wonderful. So I saw some of the other folks were like, it's really warm here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Sam, Sam gets me. I, I've known this from the start, Sam. She's like yarn everywhere. Karen says, yes, yarn, fabric, paints, all the things. I love that. <gasps> My friend Alex is here. Alex, darling, where are you? What is happening? Yeah. Connie says, out of control yarn stash. Don't tell my husband. <laughs> He's living in denial. That'll be our secret, Connie. You'll stay here. What happens at Live at the Loom? Well, sometimes stays at Live at the Loom. How's that? <laughs> Tamison says, she's never, never have enough yarn. I use it too fast. That's a good problem to have. Tamison, we love that. Uh-huh. Let's see. Okay. <laughs> Jennifer says, my yarn and fabric stash are both out of control. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Uh, you are. Yes. We're all in the same boat. That's part of why we gather together in this uh, lovely safe space where there's no judgment about how much yarn you have. There's no judgment. No, no, no. We won't tell anybody. Um, hello, Shelly Wilson. She had rain for the first time in two months. Whoo, Shelly, did I miss it? Where do you live, my friend? Where, uh, where is it? It's been so dry. Uh, Kathy Stevens says yarn, fabric, glass beads, everywhere mm -hmm. but does that make you happy like I, I i mean there's a fine line of course i mean you should not be tripping over things but i have to say that i'm such a visual person like um when i worked in the corporate world you guys tell me if this is if you relate at all but when i worked in the corporate world i was in the facilities department and so we would we would hear about these different um presentations about how people work and this was let's see i left the corporate world in 2008. That's when I left. And, um, and it was really, we were just getting into, uh, like moving away from like the cubicles and doing a little more remote work and all that stuff. Anyways, needless to say, uh, we went to a presentation and it was all about what type of, what style of worker are you? And here are the two categories. Are you ready? You tell me how you relate. Um, are you a, a piler or a filer? And what that means is that if you are a, let's start with filer. If you're a filer, you like um, a very clean desk. Everything is in its place, in a drawer, somewhere, highly organized, all that kind of stuff. If you are a piler, which if you are a piler, that means that you have to have everything out so you can see it. So you have piles on the desk. Now you know exactly where it is. But it's like it's like those are the two kind of types of personalities that you that uh, are types of workers, I should say. So what was so funny is that I um, in, I was in kind of a small department. There was um, three of us, and then um, and then a lot of it was a lot. It's like three Indians and a lot of chiefs. We had a lot of yeah, yeah. A, it was a small department, a lot of leadership. Anyways, so one of my coworkers, Anita, uh, was the the definition of a filer. Like she would have, she had, she like had drawers across the room. I mean, just files for everything, and she knew exactly where stuff was. Great, I was not. I was the piler category, which means that I had stacks on my desk, but my drawers were empty. So I always used to joke that Anita could just rent some file space from me because I wasn't using it. But I, I always found stuff. I always knew where it was. I knew what I was working on. But the second one, a drawer, I completely forgot about it. So that's, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, uh, that was my two cents about what kind of personality are you, like what uh, visually appeals to you. I, everyone has their thing, right? Everyone. Everyone has their thing. Tamison says, Piler all the way. Uh, yes, uh, you know, Tamison, yeah, right there. Uh, let's see, Carrie says, I'm a filer. Oh, interesting, Carrie. You like to have it out of the way, organized somewhere else so that you can have a clear, uh, clear, there you go. 
Uh, Lori says, uh, piler with papers for sure. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Well, yeah. See, and Laura says I'm in between. I, you could be both. You could totally, you could totally be both. Cynthia says definitely a piler. Mm -hmm. Yeah. EC says uh piler like filing, but by location. Oh, I never thought of it that way. Okay. EC, that's kind of clever. Yes. I get it. I, that, to that makes sense to me. EC I'm, I'm with you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ernie says I'm a piler. Uh-huh. Yeah, Sue Ann says, I like a clean desk, but tend to pile in other areas. And that that is legit. There's certain parts of your life when you can have tolerance for one or the other. I get it. I get it. Sam says, hubby is a filer. And then there's me. <laughs> Sam, mm -hmm. I know. I Yeah, right? I, I hear you, right? I You are seen, Sam. <laughs> Kara says, pilers who don't touch my piles. Amen, sister. I know where things are in each pile, so don't move the piles. I I'm sensing, I'm sensing some, uh, um, some frustration there, Karen. <laughs> it's a safe space. We won't touch your piles. I promise, because I get it. I'm like, don't, don't try to clean that up. No, no, it's perfect the way it is. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Gemma says she's a piler for sure. Gemma. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Connie says she is a piler. Had an ongoing argument with my boss at one job. Every night she would file my stuff, and I couldn't find it. Oh, I would hate that. I would unfile and pile so I knew it was next to where it was. Connie, I, yes. I, I never had a boss that did that. I would be, I'd have to quit. I would, I would not be so happy. That, yes. Oof, that's, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, let's see. Sherry says, piler is my way to work. Uh-huh. More piles I have makes me look really busy. <laughs> Okay, there's something to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he says, my husband is a retired architect. He's a piler. His old stuff was huge, scary piles of papers and drawings, but he knew exactly where everything was. See? Amen. Hello, my name is Chris Acton, and I'm a piler. I get it. I totally get it. That's, uh, yeah. Kathy says, uh, filer for paper, piles for what I'm working on. Mm-hmm. Gemma, she's mom is a filer. She comes to stay with me and wants to organize me. <gasps> oh, no. No, 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 no. You're like, no, thank you. I know you want to do this out of love, but find something else. <laughs> find, find another, uh, another option to show how you love me. Uh, Jennifer says some of both. Yeah, I get it. I totally get it. Rosemary. Hi, Rosemary. I'm trying to declutter. Okay. When it starts to interfere with your daily life, it's time to get serious about clearing out. I completely agree there. Yes. If, uh, if, if you're tripping over things, if there's, that's usually my, that's usually my litmus test. Am I starting to trip over things or can I not find stuff? Like there's, there's certain, there's a certain point where I'm like, okay, enough, enough. That's, that's okay. Uh, Carrie says I have a self-made shade card folder, yarn type, color, quantity, and what number box it's stored in. <gasps> wow. Okay. Carrie, that is, wow. You are very, very organized. I'm always so, I'm always so impressed by that. <laughs> oh, Connie. Okay. Connie says she did quit from the job where the boss came in and filed her stuff. I, I, I would have to, that would not, no, no, no. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Sue says, Carrie, I need to see a photo. Okay. Um, by the way, that leads in perfectly to one of the things I wanted to mention to you is that, um, we have a brand new Facebook group just for everyone who, everyone who likes acting creative. That is, called the acting creative community. It is, uh, it is through Facebook. Let me put that up right there. It is through, uh, Facebook. It's been, is brand new. It's been up for all of, is this a week? Maybe. Yeah. A week. Yes. Yeah. And it is just cooking with gas. It is really doing great. Everyone there is really, really been wonderful. So if you, um, it's a great place you can share photos. That's kind of what I was getting at is that if you have uh, projects we talk about here, you can post them there. If you have questions, whatever, whatever you want to share, uh, this is a great place. You see the little Facebook group right there. You can take a little screenshot of this and, um, uh, and, and look for it over, over at, uh, Facebook. Everyone's, I was welcome. By the way, speaking of being welcome though, you must, must, must answer the questions to get in. That's one of the rules that we decided on is that just to keep everyone safe, and make sure that it's a um, it's a, a a bot free space. Everyone has to answer the questions. So if you get booted out for any reason, um, no worries. Come back and um, and uh, answer the questions. We'll let you in. So don't uh, don't worry about that. Oh, uh, Bonnie, you missed it. I was talking about you that we got to meet yesterday, which was awesome. Bonnie's a beautiful. Her weaving is gorgeous. Uh, so if you ever get to see Bonnie stuff. You should definitely uh, take advantage of that. She's she's got mad skills. Uh, let's see. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. K 
Carrie, Carrie's in the Facebook group. She's going to post some pictures for us. Thank you so much. Alex says, sadly, I'm a pilot. Nothing sad about that. That's part of what makes you the fabulous person that you are, my friend. Okay. So I think this just stays up. Let me see if I can. I'm still learning my way around. By the way, speaking of learning my way around, um, I was playing with some of the features on here and it looks like I can do like a countdown. Wouldn't that be fun? I could do like a little 30 second countdown. So it, so you can see when it's time to go live. Sweet. Right. I have to, just, I have to figure out if that means that at 9 30, the countdown starts, or if I can start the countdown before, I don't know. We'll see. I'm playing with it. We'll see. We'll see if that, we'll see if that adds to our experience. I don't, I don't know that it will, but it is just kind of fun. Look at, see, I, I can, I can roll the banner. I can roll the ticker tape. Mm-hmm. Which, um, I have to say that makes me happy for about, you know, 30 seconds. I'm like, okay, that's enough. <laughs> that's, that's good. That, that, that's all I need. Yeah. Um, okay. So let's talk about what else is happening. Tell me how your week has been going, uh, here, um, for my folks that are local in the States, we have Thanksgiving coming up next Thursday. So, uh, make a note, there'll be no lab gloom next Thursday, but I do want to hear all about what your Thanksgiving plans are. What, what is coming up for you? Will you be traveling? Will you be making Turkey? What kind of things are on the horizon? for you. So, um, lay it on me. And while you're at it, you can tell me about the projects. Cause I know I, I always want to hear about your projects too. So just share whatever you would like to share today and we will take it from there. Uh, let's see. Linka says my workbench is getting a little out of control. I'm a, a bit of a hoarder. Okay. When it comes to bits of fabric and the last few feet of yarn, what I need to do is just go through and close my eyes. <laughs> Sometimes it helps if you have someone else help you with that. Like you bring in a friend who is, um, uh, less attached. How's that? Is that a good way to say it? Less attached to all your beautiful supplies. Sometimes that helps. Um, yeah, sometimes. Mm -hmm. Alex says, I like the countdown idea. Huh? Neither today, neither Facebook nor YouTube could find you. Oh, I hate it when they can't find me. I'm sorry, you guys. Uh, let's see. Oh, thank you. Carrie says YouTube does the countdown automatically for anyone waiting on that platform. I didn't know that see thank you guys for keeping me keeping me informed i did not know that i didn't see now i know okay okay cynthia ooh 16 pound turkey already waiting in my freezer i'm the family cook okay so cynthia if you have a 16 pound turkey how many days you have to how many days ahead do you have to take that out to let it thaw is this 3 days 4 days how long does that take for that to thaw <laughs> that sounds like a big bird my friend uh let's see kathy says uh, turkey and adults and friends, adults and kids on Sunday. I love that. We're doing Thanksgiving. Well, the first Thanksgiving, we're going to have a couple this year. We usually have a couple. We're doing the first Thanksgiving this Saturday. So, um, so they will be, yeah. Okay. Lori says Thanksgiving, not over here in, uh, Lori, you're in the Netherlands, right? But I did get a can of Libby's pumpkin mix at the expat store. Yum. I saw a recipe for, I'm not a huge pumpkin pie person, but I like pumpkin flavored things. So it was a, it was a recipe for like pumpkin bars or something, which I was like, mm -hmm, I can get behind that. Yeah. Yeah, please. Connie says, not sure about Thanksgiving. Um, always go to the youngest daughters. Okay. She's going to India. Oh, hello. Wow. She may be unavailable then, huh? I understand that. Yes. Okay. Where did Ellen go? She ordered turkey dinners from a local restaurant. I like that. It's only the two of us. I'm starting to wind on a warp. It's deciding to be sticky. Oh, those sticky warps. We need some kind of a band called the Sticky Warps something. We need <laughs> some kind of a, when I go, when I do a Live at the Loom on tour, it'll be called the Sticky Warp Tour or something. Don't you think? I, I keep saying we need to do some kind of a, a Live at the Loom tour and, and we'll have t-shirts. I just want to have band t-shirt. That's really all I want to do. I just want to, I just want some kind of a cool band t-shirt, something. Uh, Jennifer says we're going to the niece's house for birthday. And Thanksgiving this weekend, making a pumpkin pie from pumpkins I grew. <gasps> you are the coolest, Jennifer Fowler. I mean, we know this, but just to reinforce that fact, you are the coolest. She grew pumpkins. That's so cool. Let's see. So fun. Shelly's going to the families. Not making turkey this year. Actually don't know what I'm bringing at all yet. Okay. They, you know, leave you in the dark. That's, uh, hopefully they'll sort that out soon. <laughs> Gemma says she got her weaving off the ridge of heddle. Excellent. This is on Tuesday. Towels are a bit smaller than planned after washing and hemming. That's uh that happens, right? It is one of those where uh, you can't always anticipate. We try, we try to learn 
and be smarter weavers every project. And it sometimes it works out great. And other times you're like, oh, still surprised. Gemma, I feel for you. Yes. <laughs> Sam says sticky yarns drive me nuts. Oh, you. Uh, yes. Right. Yeah. Especially if your loom doesn't have um, a really uh, doesn't have a real generous um, shed space. If they're sticky at all, ugh, that makes the whole thing just just more complicated, doesn't it? Yeah. Cynthia says takes four days to thaw out a 16 pound turkey. I believe that. So you often need to do the fast thaw on water because I forgot to pull the bird out of the freezer in time. I don't, right? It happens because four days, that's just like Monday, right? When you have to pull it out, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cynthia, if there's some way we could remind you, pull the turkey out on Monday. <laughs> there we go. Uh, EC is traveling nine, wow, 900 miles to the East Coast to make organized Thanksgiving dinner You did on the trip. Uh, EC, where are you coming from? Because if you're coming past Chicago, stop in and I'll... I'll treat you to coffee. Uh, let's see. Lori says, yes, she's in the Netherlands. She's a recovering pumpkin addict. Amen. We're happy to feed that addiction. Pumpkin stuff is good. Uh, Gemma says, I'll be freshly landing on Wednesday evening Pacific time. Because you're coming to, is this um, Vancouver? Ooh, did I guess right? Do I get a gold star? Did I guess right, Gemma? Is it Vancouver? Is that where you'll be? I know. I, it's Canada somewhere, right? Correct me if I'm wrong there. Ooh, Jody is meeting her son's uh, girlfriend's family. That sounds like a big deal, Jody. Is that a big deal? Have you met them? No, it's not. This is all new. We'll be thinking of you. That's a big deal. Sue Ann says we start a new tradition due to kids feeling tugged in many directions. Okay, I can understand that. Yes. So you do Thanksgiving at home. Oh, duck. Oh, nice. That sounds delicious. Then I'll meet for dim sum a few days later. Oh, so no, tur no turkey at all. Oh. Very interesting, Sue Ann. I'm all for making your own traditions. If the standard traditions don't work, just, uh, you know, do something else. Ernie says, doing pizza on a Saturday afternoon for Thanksgiving. No one wants to cook. Uh, sure, pizza, you can't go wrong with pizza, Ernie. That's a great deal. Yeah, I like that. Uh, let's see. Gemma says she's Canadian Swiss. Thanksgiving is in October. Right, I know some of you already have Thanksgiving, which... Um, I, yes, I have to remember, we talked about this, it's the second weekend, do I remember correctly? Second weekend of October? Uh, Tamison says, send yourself a scheduled text. I know, do you know what, and that always sounds like a great idea, but how easy is it to ignore a text? It's so easy, right? When it comes up and you're like, oh, that's great, I'll do that, and then it's three days later, and <laughs> your turkey's still in the freezer, it's Wednesday. I know, I know, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Donna says Thanksgiving dinner on Thursday with the hubby's family, 40, whoa, 40 plus people, so we use a church fellowship hall to fit everyone. I believe it. I would have to be throwing some elbows to get a turkey leg, because I am a dark meat girl, so, and you know, one turkey only has two legs, which they can be massive, of course, but yeah. Okay, EC says she loves to stop by, but... She'll have the kids. Okay, fair enough. EC, put a pin in it. And sometime when you can, you stop by and see me. I would absolutely love that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, Cynthia's game. She's setting up a, she's setting up a reminder for herself. All right, hello, Sandra. Sandra's here. Uh, yes, Gemma says, also using, when using yarn you're not used to, you can't tell how much the yarn fills out or shrinks. Yes, Gemma was saying that she had some towels that shrunk more than she anticipated. And, um, and it's, um, yeah, when you have an unfamiliar yarn, okay, when you have a familiar yarn and an unfamiliar pattern, that is the other occasion, right? Who's with me? I, cause you know, I love some 8-4 cotton, but there are still times that depending on the length of the floats and the pattern, the sucker will shrink very differently than other times. Yeah. <laughs> Tamison says, dark meat lovers unite. Right, Tamison? I will, I will throw some elbows. I'll be like, okay, nope, I need, I need some dark meat, please. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'll eat whatever turkey. However, if given my druthers, turkey, chicken, anything. Oh, all the, yeah. Hey, I did get a gold star, yay. Gemma's going to Vancouver. Boy, the memory is spotty, but when it works, I'm always I'm always very proud of me. Louis mm -hmm. <laughs> is kind of my house, no one likes dart me. <gasps> Laura, that's crazy. How is it no one likes dart me? That's the best. Gemma says dark meat here. Uh-huh. Yep. Okay. All right. See? This won't be the last conversation about dark meat and turkeys and all those good things. So, okay. Uh, tell me how your projects are coming. Gemma jumped in and talked about her towels. How are the projects going otherwise? Ellen has a sticky warp, which we all feel for her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Ooh, pardon me. Uh, Sandra asked if the Thanksgiving parade goes on the States this weekend. Is it on Thursday? It is, isn't it? Is it Thursday or Friday? Someone, someone, uh, someone share that information with, uh, with Sandra. Uh, Kathy says, there's nothing off the subject to Kathy. We wander all over kingdom come when we're on live at the limb. I promise. What debt size for eight, two and for eight, four cotton. Ooh, that's a good question. That's a good question for eight, four. That's the one that I use the most. Um, I will do anywhere from eight ends per inch to 12 ends per inch, 12 ends per inch. If it's anything remotely twill, like twill ish twill esque. Uh, if it is, if I am doing something, say I'm working with recycled materials, I'll give it more space and do eight ends per inch just because I want the weft to be seen more, but that is kind of my, that's, uh, that's kind of where I land for eight two. the times I've done eight two, I've done anywhere from, uh, 16, 18, all the way to 24, somewhere in there. I think Crow was the one who said 20 was a sweet spot for eight two. Uh, if you guys have other, other opinions for Kathy, chime in. Lori says dark meat lover here too. Brain fog is lifting. I'm so glad, honey. Things are clicking in my head. I decide not to do the skeleton tie up and just do hand weavers tie up for eight shaft. Lori always has some cool projects going on. So um, I'm happy to hear that you're kind of uh, finding your way through that. My friend, Jody says she's been a vegetarian for over 20 years. You're a better woman than I am, my friend. She started eating meat a few months ago. So excited for turkey. Ooh, that would be, that would be hard not to have turkey. So, um, Jody will, will share in your excitement for some poultry this holiday. Shan says my family seldom sees each other. So our families pitches in and rents a big house for Wednesday through Sunday. We would live together as one unit. Shannon, that sounds delightful. And that's long enough, right? Wednesday through Sunday. That is long enough not to, not to want to strangle each other. Right? Yeah. Oh, Chris Hadaway is here. Hello, darling. So the parade's on Thursday. Uh, I'm sorry, I forget who asked, but the parade is on Thursday. Is it Sandra? The parade's on Thursday, Sandra. Watch uh, watch for Macy's Day. Yes. Um, oh, Gemma grew up on moose and deer. I've had I've had venison. I've never had moose. Is it are they similar? I'm I'm very I'm very intrigued. Alex says I'm still Tofurky. You go, girl. Whatever, whatever floats your boat. Yes. Uh, Cynthia says her project is a new loom is halfway put together. Woohoo! Slow going because I am being careful to get it right. Good for you, my friend. That's awesome. Connie says she loves white meat. The thighs make a good soup. Mm -hmm. I sometimes call it squirrel soup. Okay, why would why would you call it squirrel soup, darling? What uh, what is the what is the connection there? <laughs> uh, let's see. Sandra. Okay, Sandra says she does tea towels in eight two and do bath towels in eight four. Okay, uh, Sandra, what's the difference in sizes for you? What, what, for you, what makes up a tea towel versus a bath towel? What, uh, what's the, what's the scale? Give us an idea of the scale, my friend. Carrie says her project, she posted it on Facebook, her turned twill cushion covers. Ooh, I saw those. Um, I think I, I checked in briefly just this morning. I'm gonna start learning the laces next. What do you mean the laces? Oh, like lace projects, like a huck lace and that kind of thing. Is that what you mean, Carrie? Ernie's waiting for her, his Bumberay kit to arrive from Chody. Okay, that's the project on the loom. Yes, Bumberay is just going to be fun. It's, uh, yes. Uh, let's see. Gemma's still struggling with one her one treadle. So I just grab the second pedal. So you kind of manually just help it out. Encourage, encourage it. Sometimes when the loom does not want to cooperate, you just have to get in there and encourage it. I, we're, we, yes, we've been there, Gemma. But that is frustrating that you have something that's not, not working the way it should. Yes. Uh, let's see. Oh, Sue Ann says, weaving along in a project for, uh, is it just, I'm gonna say it's just, how's that? Or is it gist? It's just right. Can't say more, unfortunately, but it's a fun one. Okay. Excellent. That's awesome. Okay. Uh, Tamison says the neighbor uses real squirrel in a squirrel suit traps everywhere. Nope. Nope. No, thank you. <laughs> nope. I, I mean, if I had to, if there was nothing else, maybe, but I, nope, 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 nope. Uh, Jennifer says she cut out three vintage, is it 1950s dresses to sew? <gasps> How cool. Okay. Jennifer, we're definitely gonna need to see some images of that. That sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Carrie's doing some, she can be doing some lace next canvas hug. Oh, that'll be exciting. Lace is fun. Uh, okay, here we go. Sandra, here's her, here are her differences. Tea towels are 30 by 27. That's a good size. And bath towels are 40 by 50. Ooh, those are both good sizes. Those are hefty, hefty towels, Sandra. I like that. That's interesting. You use two different uh, sizes of cotton for those. 
Uh, Connie says, when I worked at the Living History Museum, I'd cook meals and the dark meat of the thighs would be taken for squirrel, which made sense for the time period. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm with you there. That's, uh, yeah. Uh, Gemma says, moose is great as ground. Oh, okay. Mixed with ground beef. Otherwise, ground moose is hard to digest. Okay. See, I, I never know what fascinating tidbits I'm going to learn here on Live at the Loom. Sometimes it's things like, um, uh, what is it? Pl Plutolope? Plutolope? And other times it's about uh, ground moose. You know, you never know, right? Just never know. Mm -hmm. Sue says soft G for gist. Thank you. Thank you. See, putting that, putting that question mark, putting a, just a finishing that. Thank you. I can put that to bed just with a soft G. Thank you. Yes, lovely folks there. They are lovely. Yes. Uh, Link is desperately trying to finish five friendship friendship towels for a craft fair this weekend, but may have to cut off after four. Sometimes just run out of time, right? I have been there when you're like, crap, there are just not enough hours. Linka, I understand that. Yes. <laughs> Shannon says, squirrels out the fur like a chihuahua. You can't eat it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Lori says uh, she's uh, she's find this amusing. Squirrel soup tastes like chicken. <laughs> okay, so I do have a little show and tell before we uh, before we get to the actual weaving part. Let me take a let me take a swig. I um, I'm using the classic I'm using the classic mug here today because the other one, well, I'm washing it. Uh huh. I know. I know. All you folks that are grossed out by our mugs. This one, look, you can still see the little little teal in there, right? <laughs> Ramona, Ramona says today's hilarious. Yeah, we're uh, we're you know it's uh, I'll be here all week. Yeah. Okay, let me show you my let me show you my uh, um, show and tell. Uh huh. Okay, so you guys saw so oh here we go. Uh, some of this I put things I have to remember. I put like right down by my hip, but then of course they fall off the bench and yeah yeah good times. Okay, so. Uh, but I took the, uh, I took the project off the loom. It hasn't been through the washer and dryer yet. You see all my little ends. I have to, I have to, I have to tuck those in. Uh, but look at the, uh, look at the pinwheels. Woohoo! Now here's something I wanted to point out, which I think is fascinating is okay. Color, color and weaving is just my favorite thing. And here's why, because look at, uh, let's see where am I? Uh, here I am right here. Uh, look at this section right here. I'll bring it in even closer so you can kind of see now. In reality, it's a darker, like I, what I did was I did two, I did a light blue and a lipstick red here. And then I did um, a darker red and a darker blue in this section. But aren't there moments it looks like it's brown? Uh, tell me if that's, that's just me. I think it looks like it's like there's, like it's a little bit of brown in there. It is not, it's just dark red and a darker blue. <gasps> Look how fun that is. Okay, I can't wait to wash it though, because you know, all these little pinwheels are just gonna like, they're just gonna like shrink up and um, and they're just, Look at the pattern. So yeah, right? EC says, so cheery. I like that. So here, I wanted to show you the other section. I did, um, I played with, oh, here we go. Look at this. Okay, so so here's what I did then. I um, I ran out of uh, the colors, so I started to change. So I was using uh, the colors that are here. So look at this section then, and you can see uh, the pinwheels there, but this middle section just looks like a twill. That's all it is. Colored weave is so flipping cool. Look at this. Yeah, yeah. See the little, see the little pinwheels in there? I'll bring it closer so you can see. But then, then the middle section is opposite. Versus when you have, it's all about, it's all about the placement of the color. Look at that. Isn't that fun? I just had a blast with this project. If you haven't tried some pinwheels, see this whole section in here. This is when I had, uh, I had the dark. This was kind of a um, like a mashup of both. So I had. Uh, the dark red, but I had the pale blue. So see the difference? This is when it's the lipstick red and the pale blue. This is the dark red and pale blue. So it still kind of has a, a pinwheel kind of look, but it's not quite as clean as that one. Do you see the difference? Or or this one here? Isn't that fun? It was just a really fun project. I, uh, yeah. Right. Thank you. Laura Miser's with me. Yeah. This section looks brown. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sue Ann says, and after washing, it's going to look even more pinwheel E. Yes. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. It's, uh, yeah, that was very fun. By the way, my other note before I forget is that as you guys are shopping for Black Friday stuff, looking for holiday stuff, don't forget, we still have calendars. So uh, pick up your calendar. There's, uh, I don't know, I got five or six left. So if you, if you want a calendar to inspire you all year round, 
there's a calendar waiting for you. Okay, how about we weave, right? Let's uh, let's do it. Uh, Carrie says it's amazing what color blends make warp, right? Yeah, anyone done a plain weave gamp with colors? Uh, do you know what, Carrie? I love this question. And if you're looking for some guidance for a color gamp, I have an online class that's um, always there and ready for you. Uh, let's see. Uh, I can put it up in the acting creative community or I'll put it up somewhere so you can have access. You can check out the, the, um, the, uh, color gamp class. If you like that, if you want to play with, if you want to do a little deep dive into colors, mm -hmm. Gemma likes the pinwheels. Excellent. Sandra says she likes it and the color choice. Thank you. It's kind of, uh, there are times where it looks kind of patriotic. Uh, and other times you're like, okay, it's not, uh, it's Sam says this is your third calendar from yes, Sam. So cool. Uh, Lincoln says, I'm jumping back and watching it double speed to catch up what I missed walking in from the car. <laughs> uh, Lincoln, we're here for you, dear. Okay. All right. So let's, uh, let's actually weave something, shall we? Let's, uh, let's do, you know, we have loom in the title of the show. We should actually do a little weaving. That's what I'm thinking. Okay. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Alex says, no matter what else was said or shown today, my takeaway is Chris acting, throwing elbows to get a turkey. Like, I don't play. I, dark meat? Come on. That's, uh, yes. <laughs> you cracked me up, Alex. Okay. All right. So let's talk uh, Bumba Ray. The handwoven experience episode for this week uh, is just titled The Charming Bumba Ray. Now, this, if you haven't had a chance to watch it yet, uh, this pattern was completely new to me. I had never heard of it, had no, no background, no history, nothing, which makes it kind of fun then. Cause you also don't have any kind of preconceived notions. You know how that goes when, uh, when you've had like, like a little, a little experience with it. And then you come back to it and you're like, Oh, but I thought X, Y, and Z, I nothing. Nope. Blank slate. So when I found it, I was like, Oh, this is for me. This is really, this is really a pattern for me. So when we met last Thursday, I was using a lighter color than this. And I have to say, oh, maybe I'll lean you in here. Uh, everyone, hang on just a second. Let me, let me lean you in so you can see closer for just a moment. I'm always afraid of the, that the um, iPad is just going to go flying everywhere. But uh, what's so fun is just to be able to see kind of how the other colors pop when you have a darker color in the weft. It's so fun. It's so fun. Okay. So here, let me kind of... Uh, let me show you live, live action weaving right here, what this looks like. Okay. So, uh, as you are setting up your loom for Bumba Ray, that's really where all the challenges are in just setting it up. Uh, because you, uh, let's see how to explain this. Um, you have kind of uh, sets of three, you have one color for, uh, three warp yarns and one color and the next three warp yarns are a different color. Like that is part of the kind of um, hallmark of what makes the pattern. Uh, and then the second place that you kind of have to pay attention is the uh, threading because the, those three that you put together, they have to be at the points of a uh, point 12 threading. Let me back up. Uh, um, as you are putting your warp yarns into the loom, that's called threading. And for this pattern, you do something called a point twill threading, which means that instead of going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, over and over again, that's called a straight draw. A point twill, you make a zigzag. So you go one, two, three, four, three, two, one, two, three, four. I always feel like it's like a little cheer. Three, two, one, two, three, four, like that. It's all like this like zigzag kind of uh, uh, sequence in as you're putting your warp yarns into the shafts here. But you have to line up your colors just right so that, you know, your three of one color is always going to go two, one, two. And then the next set of threes is going to go three, four, three. Once you get that down, you guys, it is a walk in the park. And it's so much fun. There's no complicated. You won't have to have cheat sheet. You'll be able to remember the treadling. No problem. So let's talk about the treadling. Uh, basically, for Bumbere, it's a heck of a lot of plain weave, which... Uh, and this kind of setup is either one and three or two and four. Here's the only catch. You have a little pit stop to make in between each one. I think I use that word like if there was a drinking game, if you if you took a sip every time I said pit stop in this episode, you might be a little buzzed by the time this seven minute episode was over because I think I said it a lot. Sometimes I get hung up on a word or a phrase, you know how that goes? And, uh, and I get stuck and I don't realize how many times I say it until afterwards. 
So I'm still going to say <laughs> it's still going to happen right now. So, so here's what it looks like for the pattern that I'm using right here. I'm going to start with uh, two and four because that's in my head. That's how I kind of keep it straight. Just the, I start with two and four. Okay. So send the weft through, by the way, um, uh, um, floating salvages are helpful here. Just, just a little, little asterisk floating salvages. Okay. So two, four. So, uh, if I was going to go to plain weave, I would go straight to one and three. However, here's my little pit stop. I'm going to do uh, three and four in between. Now that's the same place you have to stop between every, uh, every pick, every throw of your shuttle. So now I'm going to go one and three. And then I'm going to come back and do three and four. Right. Are you with me? And then I'm going to go two and four. And that's one whole repeat right there. Uh huh. And what it gives you is these fabulous, like, um, like columns in your fabric, these ribs. And, um, here's what I'm really interested to find out though, is how, I think it's really going to shrink. I think because you have um, long floats, those are when when your yarn either weft or warp jumps over multiples. That's called a float. And um, because it has so, like like each float jumps over three. Well, that makes sense. Duh. Each float jumps over three. Uh, but you have so many kind of columns of floats. Uh, we'll see. It could be that the width just shrinks to nothing. We'll we'll see what that looks like. So. Um, yeah, so that that's all it is. Now, here's my plan for the project that I'm doing right here is I'm just going to keep kind of changing colors. So when it's done, uh, I started with the lightest, the lightest color uh, uh, warp here. And then I've just been working my way out the kind of a, um, a light, rusty color, the kind of dark, rusty color. And then I have this really pretty chocolate that I'm going to use at the end. So I'm going to see what each one looks like. And then I may do some kind of striped action. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Uh, we'll see how it goes from there, but that is the plan. Um, yeah. Any questions on, uh, Hey Sarah, we're glad you caught us too. Welcome. Uh, let's see. Cynthia asked, would Bumbaray make a great upholstery fabric or would the floats be a problem? I was thinking this would make a really nice looking cushion cover. Oh, nice. All right. Someone who has done play with some Bumbaray before, um, let us know what your thoughts are. Here's my guess, Cynthia. If I was a betting woman is it depends on the scale. So, um, I am using an eight, four, which, you know, is a pretty fat in the world of weaving. Eight four is a pretty uh, chunky yarn, but if you use, let's say, an eight two even, and and then you have twice as many yarns per inch, uh, then your floats are all going to be smaller. And when it shrinks, it's going to be even smaller from that. So, um, cushion cover, maybe. I would think honestly, I would think they make great pillows. Uh, the, the thing about like a, a cushion cover is, are you going to sit on it? And do you have the opportunity for a zipper to catch? That's really kind of how, as you're thinking through, as you're thinking through that whole process there. So, uh, you guys chime in and let us know for, uh, Cynthia, what, uh, what you would recommend there. Uh, let's see. Um, here we go. Oh yeah. Sandra, Sandra jumped in. She said she would use it for throw pillows, would be scared to use it for cushion covers for everything, catching the floats. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Sam asked how many ends per inch is this project? Uh, I said it at 12 ends per inch, Sam. Yes. Uh, I think the recommendation, here's what's interesting about Bumbaray. And I, I'm just, I'm delighted by it. It just tickles me to no end. If you can't tell, uh, is that you use a twill threading and you treat the whole project like it's a twill, even though it's not technically a twill. It is one of those kind of, it's not, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, you use kind of the point twill threading, you use floating selvages like a twill, but technically the treadling is not a twill because you're not, you're not creating the diagonals that is like, um, the, uh, that's what makes it unique to twill. So, so I went ahead and used, um, the, uh, I spaced my stuff closer together like I would for a twill. So that's kind of my, that's my recommendation, Sam. And I'll be able to, to speak much more intelligently too, after it comes off and it's washed and I can give you kind of the final, what does it look like after it's all been through the ringer and all of that good stuff. So, um, so yes, but that's a good question. Thank you for um, chiming in with that. Yeah. Cynthia, did that help with your, um, with your, how to use uh, Bumbare? Uh, and here's what you could always try. You could always um, do a little sampling 
Um, if it's something that you want to be washable, put it through the washer and dryer. If it's not, if you um, if you're just gonna make the fabric and put it straight on. I mean, there's something, there's different things you can play with. And I would say, um, uh, don't be afraid of some floats. Uh, it's just a matter of the scale, how, how big or how uh, small are they? And that can really help you kind of determine what's a, what a, what's a better use for it. Yes. Okay. All right. We got Cynthia. We got Cynthia squared away. What other of the world's problems can we solve for everyone today? Okay. Uh, I still have things on the list. We've been having a blast today. I can't believe we're already 45 minutes in. Okay. So, uh, oh, see, Shelly says she has to go to work. Yes. We're so glad you're here. Uh, not next week, Shelly. No, we have Thanksgiving next week. Two weeks, two weeks. <laughs> don't, don't work too hard, my friend. Okay. Uh, so as hopefully everyone caught that, there's no live at the loom next Thursday because I will be, uh, I will be, um, yeah, enjoying some stuffing and some dark meat and all that good stuff. So, uh, mark your calendars now. Here's what you do need to know is that the very last Thursday of the um, of the month, we have a studio tour coming up. Ooh, Ooh it's going to be so good. It's going to be so good. I can't wait for you guys to see uh, her space. We're, we're still working out uh, some of the details and we'll make sure that that's all good to go. But uh, if all things go according to plan, I'm going to have a lovely um, Thanksgiving, uh, or Thanksgiving. Hello. I'm reading. I'm trying to read and talk at the same time. It's never a good idea. Uh, yes. Yes. Gathy says I'll be throwing elbows. Yes, for sure. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes. So, uh, the last Thursday of the month, we're going to have a studio tour live on, uh, live at the loom. So don't miss it. Make sure it's in your calendar and that you're here for that. As I mentioned, if you haven't had a chance to watch the uh, latest episode of A Handwoven Experience. It's all about the fabulous Blum Beret. And uh, believe me, you're going to get hooked. That's my prediction, friends. You're going to get hooked. Yes. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Ernie is going to remind me at 15 minutes to drink your tea. Thank you, Ernie. I love that. I may have to have you be my official uh, tea drinking uh, uh, reminder. <laughs> yeah. Oh, see. Hi, Scott. Haven't been anything on time since before the time change. That's all right. That's okay. We uh, will take it whenever you can uh, join us. So the other thing I want to mention before we go flying off into our daily lives is that um, if you would like to chat with me um, live, like on Zoom, tonight's night, uh, the Acting Creative Insiders, uh, we're having our small group Zoom chat. It is a joy. It is always so much fun to directly talk to um, each one of the insiders and um, and we always have a good time. There's always something really um, special that kind of happens um, when we're getting together. So that's tonight at seven o'clock. If you have been rolling around the idea of becoming an insider, uh, it's never too late. Here, I think I, I think I have, I think I have the things right there. Oh, look at that. Oh, technology. Uh, you need to be um, a, a rug shuttle or ski shuttle tier, part of one of those. And uh, there's a link. I, I may have already sent out the link this morning, as a matter of fact, but there'll be a link available to you and you can pop on and say hi and show me your work and ask questions and whatever else you need. That's the whole plan. Uh, and lastly, if you, um, if you aren't uh, already getting the weekly weaving newsletter, uh, it is, uh, you are welcome to on Wednesdays. I send out just a little note to say that I'm thinking of you and I tell you a story and I, um, explain what the, uh, free content where all the good stuff that I'm releasing that week, you get kind of the first look at all of that good stuff. So, um, if you aren't yet part of part of the email community, there is never, uh, never a bad time to join. Uh, yeah. Okay. I think that does it. It was a fun one today, wasn't it? Boy, we had a good time. Yes. Happy Thanksgiving. All your wonderful well wishes. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone who's celebrating this coming Thursday. Of all the things I'm thankful for, you are just at the top of the list. Thank you so much. Live at the Loom has been incredible. And uh, I'm grateful for all the technology that lets us do this. And all of you beautiful people who contribute all the time. Don't forget to go check out our acting creative community to see um, pictures of any poster or any uh, projects that people mentioned and all of that good stuff. Okay. One more time for the folks in the back. There's no live at the loom next week. Two weeks, two weeks. That's the plan. So in that time, uh, you know what your homework is. Find a little time, do something creative just for you, just for you. Nobody else, you know, throw a shuttle, pet your yarn, start a project, finish a project, 
whatever whatever is gonna a little creative moments just for you to feed your soul it's good for you all right sweet friends this has been a wonderful have a very happy thanksgiving and i will see you in uh two weeks all right have a good one happy weaving <laughs>